Hey, I'm the Glamp Guru, and this is the BioLite Camp Stove 2. And here's everything that comes in the box. First up, you got this uh, LED USB attachable light. Then you have this uh, charger cable, which you're gonna use to charge up the BioLite before you take it outside, by the way. And third up, you got these starter bricks uh, for people that don't know how to start a fire on their own. I'm not sure you should be going outside if you don't know how to do that. Oh, and the BioLite bag to hold it all together. And a sticker. Yep. And here is the new LED interface with the three different meters. And if you don't know what you're doing, like I did it first, this thing comes in very handy. To put this stove together is very simple. Just flip out these two legs, and then the third leg is what holds in the actual orange part of the stove, where the battery is and all that. Uh, you flip it over, put the heat probe in the hole, and then lock it in with the third leg. That is it. Boom. Flip it over and you're good to go. Inside the burn chamber, the fire hits the thermoelectric generator probe and in turn powers the airflow system which creates that complete combustion cycle. A stronger fire can create more power. With up to three watts of power for devices, any leftover power is stored in the internal battery. There is a way better explanation for how it all works on the actual BioLite website and I suggest you check it out. Hold up, before you head outside, just make sure you charge the internal battery a bit because it needs to get the fans going and then the fire will take over from there. And now we're heading outside. And just so you know, this is the first time I've ever actually used this stove. So you're seeing my maiden voyage here. So first off, I got one of those starter bricks uh, to light the fire with. Uh, by the way, I do know how to light a fire without one of these, just, just so you know that I know that you know. And then I threw it in there and I took some of the dry wood, uh, dry wood's very important, and put it in there with it. Load it up just enough, you don't need a ton. And once you've kind of seen that the fire is taken, you want to turn on that fan to its lowest setting. To be honest, I'm not completely sold on it being a smokeless fire the entire time, but once I got it going and I knew what the hell I was doing, it did become a smokeless fire, which is pretty awesome. One great tip they give you, if it's really windy out, make sure to face the stove away from the wind so that you don't melt that orange part which holds all the electronics. And that would be bad to melt that. Once the fire got going, I checked to see how hot the actual body of the stove gets. And it does get hot behind the orange part of the stove. The mesh did stay pretty cool actually to the touch, but if it's a raging fire and the wind was blowing in one direction, even the mesh would get hot. So be aware of that. And on the front of the stove, you're gonna find that USB outlet and here is my shitty phone uh, being charged, just to show you how it works. Don't judge. The thing is, if you want to charge your phone or some other device for a long period of time, you got to kind of tend to the fire and make sure you keep the fire going, because if you don't, it'll start pulling from the internal battery until the battery is dead. You can also use that USB outlet to power the flex light that comes with the stove. If you want to turn it on and off, just touch the back of it. And here is the ultimate test for the BioLite. How fast can it boil a cup of water? I thought I'd be a professional and time that process. The thing is this, around minute three, it was gonna boil pretty soon, but then I realized that you have to keep putting more wood in it. So you can't really walk away from it. You have to keep it stoked if you wanna boil something fast. BioLite does say that the smokeless fire won't blacken pots, but I do think you have to be very aware of how high your flame is. One cool thing the stove will do on its own, if you try to power it down while it's still hot, it'll kick back on and cool itself before it fully powers off. I do think the stove is pretty cool and it's very compact for traveling, but you do have to tend to the fire pretty closely, especially if you want to charge a device for a long period of time. To me, the stove wouldn't be my first choice for multi-day backwoods camping, but a great value in emergency situations. Also, dry fuel is a must, and if you're in a super wet area, it may be hard to get it going. Yeah, so in the end, I think the BioLite Camp Stove 2 is perfect for someone who is car camping or glamping or at a festival or event and has limited access to power. And having the ability to cook or charge devices with a small amount of biomass is pretty awesome. Thank you again for watching. I'm the Glamp Guru. If you liked the video, I would love it if you subscribe below.